So today's little discussion is going to be about a problem that plagues a lot of carbureted outboards. It gets overlooked, ignored, but it's kind of an issue. Although not really, you'd probably never even notice it. So let me show you. We will be talking about our choke uh, solenoid slash plunger and or the linkage attached to it. So let me show you when I hook it up how it works. I'm using a jump wire here, so bear with me. Let's go ahead and uh, tap it a couple of times. The wiring, I mean, and we'll see what happens. So you can see it works. It takes its sweet time, A, working. It takes, you know, a couple of taps before it actually closes. Uh, it seems like once I did that once and you, it was already moving, you could keep going. But as I was playing with this yesterday, I noticed if you leave it alone for a while, it stops working. So I hit, I hit it four times. It looked like it moved about two and a half. So that is kind of an issue, and uh, we are going to fix it. Going to need a couple of general tools, a uh, flathead screwdriver, um, I'm going to use a pick set, this was given to me by a friendly YouTuber, thank you Roger, and then we're going to need some uh, steel wool too. So let's get this choke system apart, and then we will clean it. Also what's neat about this pick set, took me a while to figure this out, but the back is actually a magnet. So like, well, you can't see what I'm doing, but it you know sticks to metal things. So when you drop something down somewhere, you can easily grab it. Anyway, all right. Top of the choke plunger is usually held in by a tiny little O-ring here. The goal here is to not break or damage it, so we can put it back on. That way we don't have to spend two dollars on a new little tiny little O-ring. But you could probably also find one in your local parts store. Not boat parts store, but I mean you know little. Ace or Orchard or Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever. So with the O-ring off, we can get our plunger out of there. Kinda. Should be able to. Just like so. So that's the first step. Uh, what we're looking for here is any moving parts. So this rod also slides across this little bushing here. And that kinda slows it down as well. So we're gonna pop that off. goal here is to not break anything, by the way. All right, on a side note, I'm trying to increase my YouTube revenue from almost nothing to something. So one of the things it says is that you shouldn't show logos, brand names, that kind of stuff. So I no longer will use... I will now be only using this custom mixture of PB40. So what we're going to do here is... I don't know, what am I trying to explain here? As time goes on, grease kind of tends to start breaking down. When it starts breaking down, it no longer becomes slippery. It becomes kind of sticky. Which you can kind of hear with my glove there. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray it down. That'll kind of reactivate the grease, if you will. Help kind of absorb into it. And just kind of rubbed around a little. Our steel wool. Get some of our PB40 on it. And clean up our parts. them off. So now we got to clean the inside of the plunger. So steel wool, obviously steel, so it's magnetic. Taking this off and do it, cleaning it would probably be a better idea, but I don't really feel like doing that. 
I don't really think I need to. I think as it's an electromagnet, nothing's going to stick inside of there. So the plan is to clean off the steel wool dust when I'm done using the magnet on the end of my pick. So one important thing to note, I didn't spray PV Blaster down inside of there because it's an electrical part and I don't know what it'll do, but there's already some on my steel wool, A, from it sitting on the bench and then me steel wooling it down. So that little bit of PB40 on there usually helps clean out the inside of that. And I can already see that it's nice and white again instead of a kind of yellowish color, so whatever worked seems to work fine. And a little piece of steel wool dust, which, as I said, is kind of going to be expected. Doesn't look like much. Nope, looks like about it. All right, let's reinstall. Is that up there? Yeah, probably. Kind of working better already, huh? Now for our plunger. There's a little tiny groove there. And that little groove's got to be lined up. That's better. Trying to get the little O ring on now. Perfect. Let's give it a try, see what happens. Perfect. That works a lot better. So as you can see, quick, simple, cheap, easy. And you probably need to do that to your engine too. So go out back, have a look, see if you need to do it. Any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. I'll see you all next time.